Hi, uh, hello everyone, uh, and welcome to this new series where we will be covering metal. And for that, you're going to need macOS. And besides that, you're probably going to need to download Xcode for it. So uh, we're going to be using Swift, and then we're going to learn all about metal uh, with Swift UI project. Uh, so for that, uh, please do uh, download Xcode, and after that. Uh, we can start, but before that, uh, just a quick uh, overview of what Metal is. You probably already know, but it's graphic uh, graphics rendering API, similar to DirectX on Windows or for more multi-platform solutions, probably Vulkan. And the Metal is um, basically make solution, right? Uh, make rendering API. Uh, you can also render with OpenGL, but it's kind of deprecated and it might be gone anytime soon, so the, the metal is probably the best solution when it comes to rendering on Mac. Uh, so we're going to start with that. Uh, that was a quick, quick introduction to metal. Uh, and let's just start with our Xcode project here. And here, uh, what we're going to create is macOS app, and then just select app. Let's go next. I'm going to name my Pong. You can name it whatever you want. Just be make sure to select a Swift UI because that's for what we're going to be working with, and then the language is Swift. So for Metal, you could also develop in Objective C, and for Metal, you can also get C bindings as well. And um, but we're going to be using Swift because it's the easiest part if you're beginning to Metal. So let's use that. I'm going to go. I already prepared the project, so I'm just going to use it here. And we're good to go. So if you run this, let's see what we're going to get. So we're not going to get anything yet. <laughs> let's see. Uh, all right. Please do something. Aha, it's another screen. All right. All right. I'll just have to minify this a bit. And then we can see our window. And so. To get Metal working, we actually need to attach it to a window. Uh, but Swift UI doesn't have a window-specific component, so we're going to have to integrate it with NS window. And NS is it's older framework of, of a Mac, and the name still persists. Uh, but essentially, how it uh, it's going to work? So whenever you're rendering 3D, right, you have this uh, idea of uh, some kind of surface, right? So if you're working with WebGL, WebGPU, it might be Canvas. On Windows 32, it might be Windows 32 surf, um, window. On, on macOS, it's, it's NSView. Uh, and NSView, is, it kind of works like this. Let's imagine that this is our window, right? And it has X here and whatnot, so Minify and stuff like here. And then in, in this window, right, which is our window, you can create the views, right? And then you can select any of those view to render metal into it. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, that's the first part that we need to solve. Uh, so let's start with that. So to get that, uh, so if you take a look at here, we're already using this content view. So we're going to change that content view to be of type uh, NS view. And uh, for that, so it's actually going to be NS view representable. So we're going to have to implement that interface. Let's, let's just remove this a bit. And for here, so the stuff is a bit different. So do you want to add protocol steps? Yes, I do want to add protocol steps. Accept. Uh, so we're going to have to create uh, this NS view. So uh, let's start with that. So we can just say here outlet view is equal to and here so so there are two solutions right with this view representable you can either create view and set up everything yourself or you can import sorry metal kit which will set up the window for you so let's import metal kit so metal kit it's actually not metal uh, i mean it's metal but Apple also provides some convenience methods for you, for example, this window setup. So you can just say metal uh, mpk view. So this will create that view. And that view, it needs to take delegate here. 
and so we're going to provide it via coordinate and we're going to create coordinate later right the context have, has one but we actually need to implement methods so we need to implement that coordinator ourselves so we're going to do that but let's first create device and here we're creating actually metal device so the idea behind device is it actually represents your gpu so that's what this device will do uh, we can also create the rollable size uh, so here let's just add a uh, new group for now and we're going to have stance so this rollable size i just want to like have uh, my size as a constant so we're going to create a new swift file and stance and here I'm just going to say struct constants. So uh, I'm going to use, yeah, I think this is fine, static flat game width. And we can use this width and then static flat game height. And then we can also set up some height. You can set up uh, something different. I used an ATP screen, so this actually will look rather nice on it. Uh, but you can, uh, like I mentioned, use any other size if you want to. So let's go. Let's go further with this view. So we can pass its takes size here, and then for the size we're going to say its width is our constants, game width, and its height is our pop up. Sorry, constants game height. All right. I'm going to actually do it like this. And here we're actually returning MTK view. So it needs to be an S view, but uh, like I mentioned, MTK view is actually a wrapper on the NS view. So I'm, I'm going to return to it one more time. So I, I mentioned this that we have this window, right? Uh, here is X, minify, and whatnot. And then we have these views, right? This old style. Uh, old API views and here we're actually creating a view but MTK actually is is sort of a, like a wrapper on this view and set up the metal for you so that you don't have to like uh, deal with these lower details so that's what it does and then uh, since it's it's kind of wrapper you have like this uh, for example preferred frames per second we can set to 60 uh, it uh, provides us with the bytes and stuff like that so it just makes your life easier and then we can just return it now that we have created it uh cannot assign a type void this is interesting uh but let's go further so we're not going to need to implement does not conform so we're going to need to add this method update ns view we're not going to do anything with it and then finally we have to create our coordinator but we don't have yet this coordinator so let's create one and i'm going to create it here so our Swift file coordinator. Class coordinator. Uh, so let's see. Uh, it what does it need to implement actually? So this coordinator. Let me just jump to definition. Aha, uh -huh, we're passing this. All right. Uh, I know that it needs to implement this and MTK view delegate. I think so. So NS view is is its object from this old kind of framework. So we're not using Swift that much here. Actually, we're using uh, this older NS views. Uh, so let's just see a second. Cannot assign value of that coordinate to MTK view delegate, but we actually implement it here. Maybe just haven't imported it. Aha, uh -huh, I need to import metal kit. And then we need to conform to it. Okay, perfect. So now if I look at the content view, it should not complain, yet it does. So here, did I miss something? No, it should just be return coordinator. Oh, wrong one. Uh, 
and here has no neighbor drawable size my bad okay type constant has no member game i was typing quickly all right so that covers our view right we're, we're actually returning this older ns view it's just that this center key view actually wraps it up a bit so if we take a look at here it actually implements ns view and this is also important uh, so the idea is you get these layers but i'm not going to bore you with that because you can just use this class and then you can create device and then just set up some stuff uh, and then we actually need to implement the rest of the stuff in the coordinator so let's start with the coordinator so here we're going to do this uh, we're going to initialize it here so we're going to say this initialized set it to false and if it's not initialized then we can do stuff uh, here uh, and what we're going to do is uh, as follows uh, so we're going to have a reference to our device so we can say our device is of type mtl device so our metal device and uh, where do we get device from so we get it from the view right when you set when you set up this coordinator it has uh, basically a delegate and the delegate says okay we're going to pass it view right which we created here and then we get it in our coordinator so we can just use it here uh cannot assign all right let's set up device and then further this is probably even only thing that we need uh yes it is so what we're going to do further is actually we need to now draw with that device so we have device and now it gets the interesting but on how the metal works actually so with metal you have this idea when you draw and you're going to uh, see how it all works so let's say we have our gpu here so in order to uh, send a data to the gpu you use this device and then you have property q and the q is sent to the gpu and what does q uh, contains well it contains something called command buffer and there can be multiple commands buffer in a q right and the command buffer is like sort of like unit of work so the command buffer can either write data to the gpu or it can probably read the data from the gpu so let's create our command buffer so i'm going to say it like this let command buffer and then we're going to say uh sorry first we need to fetch the queue which i mentioned so let's say our queue is device that make command queue all right we make a queue and then we can say command buffer queue make command buffer all right and then uh at the end you just need to present that command buffer so we're, we're going to say draw here so that's for us to do so we said command buffer present and we get this idea of drawable here and what is this drawable right we had our view and view provides us with drawable so like i mentioned we had this uh, screen here we had this view and the view drawable is just a texture to which we can write to right so we had our uh, basically our view and then it gives us a texture to which we can render to so we're going to use metal to render to this texture <laughs> sorry about the drawings but uh, they're, they're, they're a bit weird but uh, you're, you're going to see how it works so we're going to get drawable from the view uh, so let's use our view and we use kernel draw right so that's where we're drawing to and then we just need to say command buffer and it's using command i think it's commit oh. 
commit. All right, perfect. So if I try to run this, uh -huh, it must be unref. Let's just say that we're always going to have you has no initializers. Uh, let, let's just init it as well. Let's just say super init and we don't need the pies here. All right. Actually, let's let's make this nullable just in case. The annoying thing about Swift is it, it has these all kinds of guards which are really annoying. So I can say if uh, not device, if we don't have device, we're going to return here. All right. Uh... Or if the voice is nil, ah, my bad, equals to nil. And here we can safely unwrap it. And here, all right, one more. Okay. Didn't think that we don't need in it. Okay, we're now good to go, and uh, I'm just going to minimize this. And this is our screen, so it's all set up wrongly. And that just means if you take a look at the messages here, API validation failed, enabled. All right, it works. So we need to implement it further. So we, now we need to draw it to our screen. So what are we going to draw? Well, we're just going to try to clear that color so that we don't work with purple. And how are we going to do that? Well, so you already seen this idea of a buffer. And in order to buffer to work, uh, we need to send uh, data to this buffer, right? So let's just say uh, here we have these command buffers. Let's take a look at this one. And what do we send to uh, our command buffer? Well, we can send render commands. Uh, then we can send compute shader commands, so co compute commands. You could also say uh, resource commands, which are just uh, for optimized scoping from resources. And we're going to deal with the render commands mostly, which are basically draw commands. So to do that, uh, we're going to need to create uh, our render pass so uh, to do that we're going to need render pass descriptor so how will our render pass look like let's create a render pass descriptor and then we're going to need to set up like render pass encoder and we create it with the command buffer and we can then say make you can see already, so you have com compute command encoders if you're working with compute shaders, render command encoders for rendering stuff, blit, you use blit for the scoping of resources, and then there is also parallel render command encoder for making it par parallel. There are some others, I'm not sure about all of those, uh, but let's just go with our render command encoder. Make render command encoder we're passing that render pass descriptor and then here we just need to finish our render pass encoder so render pass encoder and encoding so what does end end encoding uh, do well right so uh, I'll, I'll make this once again let's say this is our command buffer and here is our render pass encoder right render pass so we essentially encode it into our command buffer which is then uh, sent uh, to queue, right? We have queue here. And then the queue is actually executed on the GPU. Queue means the first thing that comes in is the first thing that's uh, going to be processed. So, and, and you, since it needs to be kind of synchronous, right? On the GPU, I mean, it doesn't need to be synchronous, but uh, you, you need to have some sort of order. So you're sending command buffers and command buffers 
really are, are having this random passes in them or, com or, or compute passes. Uh, but let's go further. So here we just need to describe this uh, render pass descriptor a bit. So we're going to say uh, color attachment. And we can say here zero. We can get it. Let's say color attachment zero, the texture is our uh, what, which texture? Well, our view dot current drawable. The texture, right? So we're drawing actually, we're, we're setting the target of this render command. It, it's our screen, right? So that's why it's uh, drawable from our view. So we could also render to off screen texture. We're not going to do that yet. And then we can also set, well, I think. That could be it. Uh, we just need actually to set clear color. So let's clear our buffer. Fill a clear color. We can use make. And then let, let's just set it to red. 1001. Let's see if it works. Okay, it doesn't work. Not yet. It might have a bug. So let, I, I'm just going to try to set oh oh my god it's, i know it's it's fine it's fine actually current drawable uh what was it texture all right color attachment zero let's just try to say load action let's try to clear contents of the buffer and then use the store action as well let's try it now so you just need to clear the buffer. Okay, now it works. So now we have red. So now we know that we're actually drawing the screen, which is perfect. Uh, so let's go further actually. And further, what we're actually going to need is some kind of... Uh, so we want to use this render pass encoder to actually render something else to screen. We just don't want to look at this uh, clear color. So we're going to start creating shaders. So let's just go to new, new group. We can call this shaders. So the idea of shaders, uh, I mean, this tutorial series is, is not exactly for complete beginners, right? I would expect you to know what the shaders are. And if you're a complete beginner, please do look maybe at WebGPU, uh, WebGL series, which I'll link in the description below, because there are going to more details. But shaders are just actually programs that execute on, on the GPU. And in metal, we, we have metal shaders. And then we can just call this, I'm going to call it unlit material shader. Let's create one. And here, uh, we're going to do it like this struct. So we're going to have our output. And first, what do we need to output? Right, we need to output position. And you use these attributes in, in metal. Uh, just be mindful of, uh, of syntax. Uh, it, it uses kind of C++ syntax. So first we're going to create material vertex shader. Uh, sorry, we're going to create vertex shader. And then we're going to use this built-in. And we're going to say here you int. Uh, vertex ID and then vertex ID. I'm going to explain it in a second. Oh, but, sorry. So let's just format it a bit so that it's easier to read. And you kind of use these keywords with these kind of brackets here. And then let's do this. Positions. I'm going to type it and then explain it. All right. So we need to output it. Uh, 
So what am I doing here? Well, uh, float. This should be fine though. That's weird. Anyway, I will see. Maybe it will compile. Uh, but what am I doing here? Well, basically, if we have our screen, and if you look at this position, it's going to be basically a triangle. And so we're specifying this triangle. And what does this ID here present? Well, it's going to present ID. So you can say uh, how many triangles, how many this of these vertexes you want to draw. And we're, pay we're going to paste three here. Uh, we're we, we have to set that from the CPU side, right? This is executing the GPU. And when you send it, we're going to send three, and then we're going to use these positions to draw a triangle. So it's going to go here, here, and probably here, right? Three times. So that's why it's this three. And then we're going to send this three. And this vertex ID, it's a keyword, but it essentially means execute per vertex, right? And then here is one vertex, second one, and then the third one. And then, uh, we're going to have fragment shader and fragment shader actually colors our, our fragments so we're going to cover uh, shaders also a bit into a um, bit more when it comes to it but uh, so input of our fragment shader is going to be output of our vertex shader uh, so we're going to have here vertex shader output in and then we just need to use keywords stage in so we get it here and then we're going to just going to return simple call here float four and i'm going to use green one okay all right that should be it. i still don't get why is this complaining though did i miss something here i haven't right let's try to compile it Ah, I missed comma here. All right. All right, that's it. It should compile now. It compiles. Perfect. All right. Uh, let, let's go further. So the thing with the Xcode, it's automatically going to compile shaders for you, which is super nice because you don't have to load them as strings. And also you, you, you can either load them uh, in runtime or where you get like your shader file as a string or, or binary or you can actually uh, compile them and the Xcode is going to compile them for you, which is super convenient. All right, and let's just create, we're going to need our shader lib. So we, we just need some way uh, to actually reference those shaders and I'm going to create a small class. I'm going to call it shader lib. So it's a Swift class. And here it's going to be really simple. Uh, once again, we're going to need metal kit. And then we're going to play, have our class shader lib. And here we're going to going to need our library. So it's just a collection of, of shaders. Uh, we're going to provide vertex function. So entel function, metal function, let's just set to nil. And then fragment function. Ah, I have suggestions here, which are not working. Ah, weird, super weird. All right. So what do we need here? We need to init it. So we're going to need device. And if you're wondering what this does, it's, it's a bit weird syntax, but usually when you, if you don't have it, uh, you need to specify uh, this parameter and then, then variable name. I'm, I'm going to explain it in a second uh, here. So let's say that we had some function, some function here. And if we don't specify this, we need to type it like this device and then paste device. But if we, we add this keyword, we can just say this device, right? So that's just an example. Uh, so we're going to need vertex function name. 
of type string and then fragment functioning of type string. Perfect. So here we can request that library. So it will it will just get us our shaders, and then we can say let function. Uh, so we need to make those functions, and then we specify we use the name here. If we don't find it, we can just throw some fatal error. Weird, this cause just suggestions are not working at all. Uh, not working at all, but we're just going to say vertex function name function not found. Okay, it wasn't found. So it, it's just so that it guards you if, if you pass something uh, wrong. And here we're going to say similarly make function, uh, fragment function name else we're just going to we can copy paste and here say fragment and then fragment function name not found and then we can set this to vertex function and then set this Okay, so what are we doing? Uh, we're, we're fetching those pre-compiled shaders, right? Which is this one. And then we reference our functions. So we need to get a vertex and fragment function uh, from it. And then we just uh, get them from our shader, right? And that's why we use this name here. And then we get those functions, so those functions, and then we have this shader lib. Uh, maybe shader lib is not that good an open name because it's, ah, maybe it is. Well, but the point is it's it's just going to provide us with some data that we're going to need to create render pipeline state, which is used actually to render to screen. Uh, so let's go further. So if we return to our coordinator here, so I'm going to do it like this. We can create uh, these pipeline states. So what we're going to need here, we have this empty k view. So only if we're initializing it, we're going to say here let shader library. And we have this shader lib. So we're going to paste the device here. Uh, we called it unlit material. And I called the fragment shader unlit material fragment shader. And then we can actually create our uh, render pipeline. So we're going to need render descriptor. Uh, so we're going to say render pass descriptor and here we just need to pass some data. So I'm going to use label here. So the label is just for the purposes of debugging. You don't have to set it if you don't want. I'm going to set it, but it's really not necessary. It just helps you uh, if you're going to do some debugging. So we need to pass that uh, vertex function. So we're going to say our render descriptor dot uh, render pass descriptor oh sorry my bad uh, pipeline pipeline descriptor we're creating pipeline descriptor vertex function is from our shader library so we're going to say vertex function uh, so we're going to say fragment function fragment function so then and finally we just need to say uh, the color we need to set the color attachments right so uh, the pixel format you always need to set this uh, pixel format as well and then we can create it start render pipeline state so we can try to create it by device Right, make render pipeline state. So we pass in that render descriptor. Or if we cannot create it, we can just throw some error here. A fatal error. 
And let's, let's say could not create unlit render pipeline. Okay, we have this render pipeline. Uh, so we just need it in draw. So I'm going to do this var render pipeline state and mtl render pipeline state. I'm going to set it to nil. So here it's it's created. So we're going to say self render. And you can just set it and then finally we can use it. So that's how you create a render pipeline state. And what's render pipeline state? So it's basically it's it's what we want to draw to screen, right? So it has our shader. So we're going to use this shader to draw something to screen. Uh so here it's complaining about something. Uh, let me see. Try. So using device. Okay, so our device cannot be null. We have to explicitly say that, and then we can finally draw. Uh, so for draw, uh, we had created this render pass encoder. So we can use render pass encoder, set render pipeline state, and then we have this render pipeline state. And then finally, so we're going to just have to say render encoder, render pass encoder dot draw primitives so how uh, what type do we want to draw we actually want to draw triangles uh, so vertex start is going to be zero and how many vertexes right three right because if you remember uh if i bring this up i specify that we want three vertexes so you specify that here right vertex count and then it goes into shader it passes right for each of these vertexes. So it will be first vertex, it will hit this function here, second vertex hit this function here, here, but with index two, right? And then the third one, the parameter is actually, it's actually index three, right? Because it's zero indexed, but you get the idea how it works. So if I'm to render now, almost there, missing argument fragment, all right. Ah, just don't forget to add this discard thingies. And here we're going to say device that it's always available, it compiles, and here it goes. We have our first triangle. Uh, yeah, uh, one, one thing that the resolution is, is still kind of not quite there yet, so I'm going to fix that quickly. And if we go to a pong, you can say here frame and this is how you actually set it up uh, in, with swift ui so we're just going to say again constants and i think it needs to be wrapped into cg load game const sorry I, I just use constants probably yeah game width and then the other one is height cg float constants game Let's see. I'm just going to zoom it out. Okay, here it is. All right. Uh, so, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully, it wasn't too hard. Uh, I mean, the setup of, of stuff is always the harder, hardest part when you're working with something. And we survived it. And for the next time, we're actually uh, going to pass this data as an attribute. So it's going to be defined on the CPU and then we're going to pass it to the GPU because obviously you don't want to draw like this. And we might rent a quad and then, then we'll see what we're going to do next. Uh, all right, so that's it for this video. I'll hopefully enjoy it and until next time.